We're starting 2.3 now. In 2.3, we'll get to see some derivative rules that will let us use algebra all the time to do derivatives. Um, so that'll be a great set of skills, and it's the building block for later things too. So let's just recap some of what we've seen so far. Uh, in chapter 2.1, we used algebra to find that the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. And we did a difference quotient and expanded and canceled and canceled and stuff. Um, so we saw that. On the uh, finite difference, or the, the backward difference, forward difference quotient um, homework, we made a graph of x squared in Excel, and we took its derivative, and uh, we, we took the difference quotients and graphed them, and we got a straight line. We didn't actually stop and say what that straight line was, um, so that I've kind of left that blank here. Uh, you could go maybe fit a trend line to it and see what it says. Um, but the central difference quotient version of it did go through the origin, so that was uh, at least close enough. So that was interesting. Um, in one of the uh, worksheets for chapter 2.1, uh, we were drawing uh, derivatives, kind of sketching them by hand. And we started with a graph that looked like x to the fourth. It didn't really say what it was, but it was like a parabola, but it was really flat near x equals zero, much more than most parabolas are. Um, so that was actually x to the fourth. And when you sketch the derivative of that, you get something like this. And what does that look like? Maybe x to the third? Um, so uh, that's a good question. Is it really x to the third? Well, we can use Desmos to help us find out. So let's um, switch to Desmos here. Um, uh, All right, here we are in Desmos. We can say, please graph x to the fourth. And now we can ask it to graph the derivative of f. And um, it's switching my usual blue for original function color and um, red for derivative color. So let's make it switch. So that is that red curve is the derivative of, uh, of the blue curve the way Desmos is calculating it for us. Um, we want to graph something that we think might be the derivative, x cubed. It's good to give it a name, but we can't call it f prime because Desmos reserves f prime for what it wants to do as the derivative. So what we can do is say f sub um, prime guess. Desmos will let you type anything you want in the subscript there. So this is our guess of what the derivative is. And we can say that's x cubed. And um, let's turn that to maybe black and dotted. So are we right that x cubed is the derivative of x to the fourth? Well, these two curves don't match. So what can we do to make them match? Can I shift the my black curve up and down? Will that make it match? Well, it'll make it, if shifting it up will make it closer here, but not as close down there. You might say, well, the red curve just needs to be wider, and that's a good way of thinking of it. Another way of thinking of it is that the black curve needs to be narrower or taller. So um, one way we can say it is um, like multiply x cubed um, times some value k, and then that makes, um, we'll make this black and dashed. So that makes the black curve taller. And I could kind of eyeball what a good value of k is. But another way of thinking of it is if I think that two curves are the same except for a vertical multiplier, I can say, show me one of them divided by the other one. And that, in this case, looks like it's constant. So that's kind of interesting. And it's not just any constant, it's the constant four. So stop and think about that, and we'll turn back to um, our by hand work. Okay, here we are back in our uh, by hand work, and we found it was actually four x cubed. So we can write that in here, four x cubed. 
maybe we're seeing a pattern so far. Let's take a look at, uh, so that's x to the fourth, x cubed, x squared, x to the one. Let's look at that. Oh, um, I'm using a slightly new notation here. I'm saying whatever's in the parentheses, take the derivative of that. So rather than giving the function a name like f, uh, sometimes we just want to take a shortcut. What's the derivative function of x to the one? x to the one is just the line y equals x. Well, the line y equals x has slope one everywhere. I can imagine adding tangent lines and all the tangent lines have the same slope and it's always one. So I get that. So um, the derivative is just the line y equals one. So I get, um, well, I'm gonna leave a blank here and I'm just gonna write a one there. And then what's the derivative of x to the zero, as long as we're playing with powers of x. Well, x to the zero is a flat line, so what's its derivative? What's the slope of the tangent line at each point? Take a, take a sec to think about that. Well, the slope here is zero, and the slope here is zero, and the slope here is zero, etc. So it's just all zero. So again, I'm going to leave a blank there. Maybe we'll fill that in later. And can we say what pattern we're seeing here? Are these things consistent with it? What do we think the value would be up here, which we haven't played with? Let's try x to the fifth. So make a guess as to about what x to the fifth is uh, of x to the fifth prime. Uh, guess, uh, check it in Desmos. and come back here, pause the video. Okay, unpause. So uh, you probably found that it's 5x to the fourth. And seeing that pattern, 5, 4, 3, 2, we would expect a 1 here. Uh, power of 4, power of 3, power of 2. This doesn't have a power. Can we put a power on it so it's just like its friends? Because conformity is important. So a 1 would make sense there. Um, then I don't have an x here, so what can I put? If I wanted to have an x, what could I put? Think about that. I can't just put an x, because I should get an answer of 1. But this is suggesting 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, blast off. Does that expression, which we got from this pattern, end up giving you that? Yes, it does. And then if we continue this pattern, this one feels a little more dangerous, and you'll see why in a sec. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 suggests putting a 0 here. And 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 suggests doing x to the negative 1, because that's the next integer after 0 when you're descending. And does that give me a 0 answer? Well, yeah, multiplying by 0 cancels out that. It's a little dangerous because of a potential divide by 0, but we'll ignore that for now. So we certainly have a nice pattern there. Let's extend it a little bit, or just guess. What do you think x to the 13th derivative of that is? Um, so again, you should guess and go check it in Desmos. So hopefully you got 13x to the 12. And now for the really fun one, what about x to the n prime? What, what, if n is just some integer like 13, what can we say about that? Now that's one that's actually a lot harder to check in Desmos. You could have an n slider and just slide it from one integer to another. Um, and you'll find that n times x, so if I had a 13 here, the 13 pops down in front, and I'm not left with a 13 in the numerator, in the exponent, I'm left with 12, which is n minus one. So, so far, our pattern is working okay, um, and so far the pattern is only for positive integer n, maybe zero. Um, so the pattern works for positive integer n. And we'll see in chapter 2.4, 2.5, 2.6 that it works for all real numbers n, but uh, when, um, we just need to be careful about divide by zero, maybe. We'll see. Um, 
so, so chapter 2.5, uh, 2, uh, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6. Okay, and the important part here to note is that n is a constant. With respect to x. So if we were to try this um, for something that's not constant with respect to x, things go wrong. So let, let's say that again. This is a rule for when x is raised to a constant power or you could say um, it's a variable raised to a constant power it could be t if, for example or s or something Or you could say it's a variable in the base and a constant exponent. In particular, what it is not is a constant base with a variable exponent. So what are some functions that have a constant base and a variable exponent? Things like 2 to the x, 10 to the x, e to the x, 0 0.5 to the x. So what we were just was we're just, what we just did was you could say these three ways, but not these ways. So what we've been talking about, all of these, you could sum them up by saying that's the power rule the derivative of x to the n is n times x to the n minus 1. Really what that should have been called whenever someone named it 100 years ago or, or more, it should have been called the constant power rule because that n has to be constant. It can't be a letter like, it uh, can't be a variable like x. So really, we should say constant power rule for derivatives. Um, if you tried something like x to the x derivative, you might guess that it would be x times x to the x minus 1. And it's not bad in math to make a guess and go check it. Um, and if you go graph it, I encourage you to graph it. It turns out that you do not get this expression. You don't get it, that curve. Um, So this, this one is tricky. It has an x in the base and in the exponent. So it's not exactly variable base constant exponent. It's not exactly constant base variable exponent. Um, so we're just kind of stuck there. There is a way to do it later, uh, but we won't worry about it for now.